talked enough already tonight about Patrick and his remarkable career. Now let's see it with our own eyes and remember the legacy of number 12 in San Jose. San Jose is proud to select from the Seattle Thunderbirds, Patrick Marlowe. Tim Burke from the Sharks makes the announcement and Patrick Marlowe will know the way to San Jose. Well, it's just great to see where you're going and it's uh, just exciting all the hype around it. And it's uh, been a dream of mine throughout the year and it's just uh, overwhelming. It's great. Patrick! of a remarkable career. But without further ado, let us welcome the man who we are all here to recognize and celebrate. He is a San Jose Sharks franchise icon. Number 12, Patrick Marlowe.
27, this young, lanky kid from Aneroid, Saskatchewan, population less than 100 at the time, would go on to have the legendary career that he did. 566 goals, 631 assists, nearly 1,200 points, 109 game-winning goals. You talk about clutch scoring. He's tied for seventh in NHL history in game-winning goals. And he had a game-winning goal against every team but one that he played. He's played in more regular season games than anyone in National Hockey League history. But it's, but it's not just the regular season. 195 Stanley Cup playoff games, 177 of those right here in San Jose. Representing his native Canada, Patrick won two Olympic gold medals. He was a member of the 2004 gold medal winning World Cup of Hockey team, and he captured another gold at the World Championships in 2003. That's quite a resume. Now, how did he do it? Let's take a look back at this then young man who would go on to have one of the most remarkable careers in National Hockey League history. When Patrick was a little boy, uh, the population of, around Android is around 70 families. It's a farming community. Everybody cooperated and did things together. They were tight-knit in that you knew your neighbors, you knew all the community members, a very friendly community. Patrick, as a child growing up, was like any typical young child. He um, spent a lot of time outdoors, and of course he had his farm chores to do, but he was into sports most of the time. He just loved skating. I'd take him to the rink, and I got this chair for him to uh, push around the ice, and he, he went up the ice about halfway, and he, he cut across. The, he says, Dad, I don't need this. And he just turned around and he, he skated off like as if, and this was one of his first times that he went skating. And Patrick always played up an uh, age group, and you could just see when he played up, I mean, the, the leadership quality and that, that just came along with a 10, 12 year old boy. When we met Patrick and we went out to his hometown in Aneroid, Saskatchewan, he gave us the directions to go out there and he was kind of like, oh, you're not going to believe this. There's no street signs. So you got to go down to a certain tree and take a right and then take a left. But on the first meeting, it was kind of eye-opening in the, the character he had. You could see it in the family. You know, when we first saw him, it was very clear that his number one asset was speed. It was a powerful speed. And he knew how to get open, and then he had a great release. And then there's something, too, you can't teach. You know, sometimes you can have that, but somehow pucks just don't seem to go in for certain guys. His pucks seem to go in. When Patrick got uh, drafted in Pittsburgh, that was an exciting time. And the Sharks uh, management, uh, they were really great with Jeanette and I. He was a classic of a high pick that can change the franchise for a long time. He it was one of those generational pieces for a franchise. He was that guy. At that time, until I got to know him, he came across as you know, very quiet and reserved. A lot of times that can be read as not intense. You know, we kind of get buffaloed by the guys with the yapping and the trash talking and things. But I think as you got to know him, you learn that not to be fooled, that deep down there was some intensity that far surpassed the guy with the big mouth. But he played an exhibition game. It was either his 18th birthday or right in there somewhere. So, you know what, I remember thinking after the game, hey, this kid's got a chance right away because just the way he plays and the way he thinks the game. He was one of those guys that when things weren't going well, he only needed one chance to score. And yet there's not a lot of guys like that, they, one chance to score, and they could keep you in games. This guy got better as a player. And it's almost impossible because it's a version of hockey sense. But I distinctly remember watching up top, and I'm like, holy smoke. I never made that play before. So it's really interesting. He was a better player eight years into his career, and you don't see that very often. Quite honestly, if Patrick Marlowe would have come along 
five years later and the way the game's played now, he'd have went even to a higher level. You look at these young guys in the game now, these big kids that can really skate and handle the puck. But if I was one of those players and I had to pick somebody that I could emulate from years past, I'd pick Patrick Marleau. He's a role model, the real deal. I mean, we make so much of these guys with talent and assume their character. No, talent and character at times can be mutually exclusive, not inclusive. This kid was both. At the end of the day, Patrick's a great guy. The three things you want in your organization, you want great people, great teammates, and great competitors, and check them all off for Patrick Marlowe.